Hey everybody, we need to talk about what's happening with single family home construction here in Greater Victoria because the numbers, they're way more extreme than most people realize. I've pulled the data from CMHC, BC Housing and the Victoria Real Estate Board and when you line them up, the picture is honestly shocking. <laughs> So if you're planning to buy, sell, or invest in Victoria, this isn't just interesting, it really directly affects your long-term holdings and your real estate wealth. So let's break it down. All right, so let's walk through the full construction pipeline step by step. So step one, registration. So before a shovel even hits the ground, a new home needs to be registered with BC Housing. In August, only 21 single family homes were registered in the entire capital region. So that's our earliest indicator of future supply and it's barely moving. Step two, housing starts. That's when construction actually begins and CMHC tracks this showing 32 single family starts in the month of August. Year to date, just 190 single family homes are under construction across the region. Meanwhile, there have been 2,935 multi-unit apartment starts so that's about 15 apartment units for every single family home. Step number three, under construction. Right now they estimate about 333 single family homes are being built across Greater Victoria. Compare that to 8,329 apartment units. You can see the imbalance here is enormous. And step four, completions. So far this year, only 179 single family homes have been completed. That's down 34% from the 273 the same time last year. And here's where reality really hits. In September, the Victoria MLS recorded 277 single family unit sales, but almost all of those were resales, not new construction. And I'm gonna put up the trend on the screen over the last 12 months so you can see how many single family homes are transacted each month. And you can see that month after month, we're selling hundreds of detached homes, but almost none of them are new. We're basically living off yesterday's inventory. And so I'm gonna show you where the math doesn't quite work out. When you look at CMHC's headline numbers, it's easy to say that construction activity looks fine. There's about 6,600 total units on a six month average. But if we dig a bit deeper, only 6% of that is composed of single family homes. Apartments are making up more than 80% of new construction. And about 64% of that is purpose built rental, not for owner occupiers. And on the demand side, absorption rates have slowed. Just 11 single family units were absorbed in August, down from the 30 to 34 in the previous months. But the few brand new single family homes that did sell, the median price was 1.36 million. Average price was just over 2.1 million. So that tells you that the market is really pricing in this scarcity and developers are having to charge quite high price for delivering that new single family product. So why is construction really collapsing and coming to a standstill with single family homes? So there's three big reasons. The firstly, of course, pure economics. A single family lot is just gonna produce that one 1.4 million entry level home. If you do a little bit extra nicer finishing, maybe you can get that up to just over 2 million. But you could redevelop that same lot into four townhomes or on a larger lot, a multi-unit building and suddenly the math is way better. Builders are gonna to continue to follow the margins and the margins are in density. Secondly, the government policy, both on a municipal and provincial level, it isn't a glitch. BC's housing strategy is designed specifically to encourage rental and multi-unit housing. Purpose-built rental registrations are up 56% this year. There's more than 18,000 units in the provincial pipeline. And cities like Langford, Victoria, and, and Saanich are all approving way more multi-unit homes than single family. And that's exactly what the province and the city wants. Third, the completion crisis. Even when homes start, they're taking longer to finish. Completions are down 34% year over year, thanks to construction costs, labor shortages, and tougher financing markets. So let's take a quick look at demand and demographic shifts, BC population growth, 
has been pretty slow lately. In the 12-month period ending in March 2025, uh, the province only grew by 53,000 people. That's just shy of 1% growth. And in the first quarter of this year, BC's population actually declined slightly, down about 2,300 people. That's mostly because 10,900 permanent residents have left and we're still losing people to Alberta through interprovincial migration. But even with that slowdown, housing supply is falling faster than population growth. And to really understand how big the shift is, you have to look way back. So in the early 2000s, BC was registering 9,000 to 11,000 single family homes per year. By 2024, that number dropped to just 5,100, a 55% collapse. And here in Victoria, currently we've got about 333 single families actively under construction. So we're not building more, we're really flatlining if not declining. So what does this mean for you? If whether you're buying, selling or investing, if you're a single family homeowner, you own something that's becoming rare. Victoria had 277 single family home sales in September, but only 179 completions all year. Almost nothing new is being added back to the detached housing stock. Even though the market is technically balanced, our sales to listing ratio hovering in that sweet spot of 14 to 20 percent, the long term supply crunch clearly favors you. On the other side, if you're a buyer, you're not competing much for new homes, you're competing for used inventory. And most of it's 30 years old or much older. New construction just really isn't part of the picture. Single family resale home sits at just 1.17 million, up about 1.2% from last year. But that stability won't last if the supply keeps shrinking. And for investors out there who can buy a single family home, this is just a textbook supply constraint play. So when starts are flat, completions are way down and resale activity stays strong, there's that long-term fundamental is pointing up. Short-term prices are currently stable, but three to five years out, the supply just isn't coming and that coveted single family home property type is gonna be more rare and rare and accessible to fewer people. So at every stage of the pipeline, supply is collapsing while demand is holding steady. We're not building our way out of this Policy is favoring density and will continue to do so. Developers will continue to follow profit and construction delays are going to continue piling up. So the idea of owning and living in a single family home in Greater Victoria isn't extinct, but it's quickly becoming an endangered species. If you found this breakdown useful, hit that subscribe button. I share data driven insights on the Victoria housing market. I try not to hype it up, just real numbers from CMHC, BC Housing, Victoria Real Estate Board. My name is Dustin Miller, Managing Broker at ADEX Real Estate. Would be happy to chat about your current situation and real estate goals. Visit my website for more info. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.